Sadly, many of us have always tried to grasp everything for ourselves in every circumstance. Even in spiritual practice, we still cannot stop being greedy and selfish to try to snatch spiritual blessing at the expense of others is even graver than trying to snatch properties or possessions from other beings in the mundane world, because we are already on the spiritual path. Whatever we take, we must earn ourselves. And we can ask for blessing and guidance and help whenever we need. This okay, when the need arises, when it's necessary, but never at the cost of other people's happiness and convenience. Try to remember this. In every situation in life, we must always be considerate and fair-minded. Not that I ask you to always sacrifice yourself, even for the other people's happiness or gain, but at least to play fair. You understand? Because if we are as the practitioners and we cannot play fair, how can we expect the world outside to be fair to us or to be a fairer place for everyone to live in? Is that not so? Your soul knows what is right and what is wrong. Your soul knows. That's why you came. We should never forget our dignity and our noble purposes everywhere, for whatever price. If we practice well and if we love the Master and love God, God knows. The Master knows, don't they? Sure. And if they don't know, so what? The Master is inside. Even the deer is better than many human beings, and the golden goose, etc. So we should learn from all these golden animals. Huh? We don't care whether he was a Buddha, uh, previous reincarnation or not. Their action bespeaks their inner spiritual achievement. So don't be too proud that we are human beings if we are not up to it. Actually, I don't know why we should be proud that we are human beings. I read in the newspapers, I heard on the radio, I saw on TV, so many noble animals that they rescue people, huh? they rescue their own kins at the expense of their own life even. There was a picture of a cat. She was totally burned blind and scarred all over because she came four times into the fire, burning house, to rescue four of her kittens. And she was burned blind and beyond recognition. But she brought them all out to safety. A cat. A cat is very independent. After she was pregnant, I think she's not helped by any male or father. She raised her children alone. And I've seen many cats in our surroundings sometimes who do all these beautiful things to her children. I saw her bringing food, you know, for the children, and I am touched by her devotion. And she has done her best to provide nourishment for her children while eating garbage for herself. I saw it with my own eyes. I am only very moved by her love. And this picture is still vivid in my mind every time I think about cats. So I don't know why we human beings treat animals so cruelly, most of us, and think of them as a low level of beings. I think many of them, the animals, are so noble, so noble and so loving to their own kind as well as to other. And sometimes you see a cat or dog huh, uh, swim into the very dangerous uh, river to rescue his friends. Huh? Be it a human friend or a dog friend or a cat friend, they do that at the risk of their own life. 
but not many of us human beings dare to do this. When we see the situation dangerous, we don't risk our life. But the animals, they see danger, they still risk out of love. So if we human beings cannot return to this basic compassion and love of the natural instinct which the animals still possess, then we should feel more sorry for ourselves than being proud of us. And that is the reason why we must be vegetarian, because they are truly noble, they truly possess the human quality and a soul within them, just like ourselves. So I think it's also good when we learn from the animal. Some of the quality, not that we learn to become an animal, but their good quality we should remember, so that we don't feel ashamed to be lower than animal standard, at least. We should rise to the noble position of a saint, and to do that, we must possess compassion and love and understanding and unselfish sacrifice at all times, be it in retreat, at home, in the supermarket, or anywhere else, even in the forest, where nobody else can see us and nobody else is there to record our good deeds or to praise our noble effort. We must always be noble alone, because we alone know what we are, and God knows. <laughs> 